Now I've got some examples where the goal is to go in the other direction. So instead of expanding a logarithmic expression out, now we want to fold it back up into one uh, nice, neat, single logarithmic expression with a coefficient of 1, so with no number out front. OK, we're going to use those same properties, but basically in the reverse order. So if you recall in those previous examples, one of the last steps we would always perform is take the exponents, push them down in front of the logarithmic expression. So going, working backwards here, one of the first things we'll do will be to take these coefficients and fold them back up into the exponent. So focusing on this example number one here, the first thing that uh, I would recommend you do is to take this coefficient of one third and put it up in the exponent. So this is log, this is the common log again of a to the one third power plus log of b. Now remember that when you have the sum of two logarithms, you can push those together. So the way um, I've wrote, written this property of logs previously, I would write log base b of m times n equals log base b of m plus log base b of n. And so in the previous examples, we would go this direction. We have log of a product. We break it up into two separate logarithms. Now we're going to go in this direction. So we have the sum of two logarithms. We're going to push them back together into, log of an, into a single logarithm of the product of those two expressions. And so keep in mind, when you combine these, you should only be writing log once. That's the whole point is you take your two separate logarithms and condense it to a single logarithmic expression. Now, one other thing. So the one third power, remember these, these fractional exponents like this represent roots. So a to the one third represents the cube root of a. And so this is equal to the cube root of a times b where the b is not under the radical. So here is your nice, neat, condensed logarithmic expression uh, that you can form from this sum in example number one. All right, so I'm going to move over to example number two. I'm going to get this property out of the way. Um, now we have to be careful over here. Because I know in this previous example, I gave you the advice that, okay, coefficients, fold those up first. That only works, well, let's be clear about these properties. So if you want to apply this property, well, I'm going to write it the way we used it in the previous set of examples. So log base b of m to the p is equal to p times log base b of m. That doesn't work for a sum of two logarithms. So we really need to combine these guys first, and then you'll have 1 half times a single logarithm. Then you can put that 1 half up in the exponent. So because the 1 half is now applied to a sum, we can't fold it up right away. You actually, you have two options if you want to look at this way. You could distribute. You could multiply out 1 fifth times this first part, 1 fifth times the second part. 1 half, I mean, sorry. 1 half times this first part, 1 half times the second part. or kind of follow your order of operations. You should combine the logs inside the parentheses first. So I'm going to do that using, I wrote this down a minute ago, but I think it's worth writing again, using this property of logarithms, but going in the reverse direction of how we went in the previous examples. So take that sum of two logarithms and express it as a single log this time it's log base 3 of x times y. All right, and that still has the coefficient 1 half in front of it. And then I'm going to leave this part alone for now. So one thing at a time with these logarithms, just take it, take it easy. Don't try to atta attack it all at once. Just reason one, one step at a time through these things. So now I have one fifth, uh, one half, I don't know why I keep calling it a fifth, one half times this single logarithm, so we can put that up in the exponent, just make sure you put parentheses around this. 
and the 5, you can put that up in the exponent. If you're wondering on that second part, well, why don't you put negative 5 up in the exponent? You can if you want to. So that's kind of a personal choice at that point. If you put negative 5 up in the exponent, then this should become a plus. You can't leave the negative here and put it up in the exponent. It's got to be one or the other. Okay, but so I have log base 3 of x times y to the 1 half. And then I'm going to move up just the 5. So this is log base 3 of x minus 6 to the 5th. Okay, it's going to be just one more step here. So there's the third big property of exponents that you study in this section is that if you have log base b of m over n, that's equal to log base b of m minus log base b of n, log of the top minus log of the bottom. But we remember working the other way. So if you have the, a difference of two logarithms, if you have subtraction of two separate logarithmic expressions, you can combine it to a single logarithm, in this case base 3. So combine this as a single logarithm, base 3, where the first part goes on top, the second part goes on the bottom. The key is that the part with the negative coefficient goes in the denominator. Because remember, I mean, if you think of this as a negative 1 coefficient, put it up in the exponent, negative 1 power, that means you should write it down in the denominator. So this is going to be log base 3 of this goes on top. And I'm going to go ahead and change that 1 half power to a square root of x times y. And this goes on the bottom, x minus 6 to the fifth. And that's your final answer.